Oh man, oh man. Damn, they yeah, told us a live man. podcast, baby. Most authentic, most organic podcast out here. Let's go. You, 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 you. Man, we're not in the studio. No, estamos en el estudio. We are in Bloomington. Bloomington, Bloomington, Bloomington California. California. We're in the Blooming? wild. We're in the wild. We're in the wild. Come on, come in the wild, wild west. ¿Cómo se llama aquí? Got the se llama right? Rancho Lagunas. Rancho Lagunas, aquí in Bloomington, California. Let me, what did we get? What did we just do, you guys? <sighs> Man, so this if everybody's is crazy, a surprise. If everybody's watching this right now, in about two hours, because this always drops at 5 p.m. on Mondays, in about two hours, we're dropping the new collection, the new it merch. Is time. It is it's time. It's time. Atos. Dichos de nuestros padres, abuelos y consejos que los han dado toda nuestra vida. All of our life, our parents have tried to guide us. All, they try to tell us things to kind of warn us about life, about friends, other family members, relationships, ups and downs. And I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I know me, myself, I'm one of those. I got to learn the hard way. They were right. Right. They were right when they said everything that they did. Yeah. We could go on and on about los dichos, but they kind of had a point. Realize it. You don't realize it though. you get older, though. Yeah. I feel like you when won't you're... listen to them unless you get you learn it the hard way. And then, that, and then like how you say, you'll realize, oh, like. And sometimes that's like, the only way you so learn. Right. Yeah. Right? Honestly, like, you can try to tell somebody something and tell them and tell them and tell them. And even though you don't want to see them go through the hardships, sometimes that's the only way of getting a message across. And yep. I'm sure we've all gone through hardships that we've oh, definitely sure. learned lessons and we'll never, we'll say we'll never do it again. Yeah. You know? No, it's definitely, especially I think the, the easiest, but one of the hardest lessons was in Spanish, dime con quien estás, te dime quien eres. Tell me who you're surrounded with and I'll tell you who you are. And learning that, you know, a hard way. You're around some people that are just not ambitious, don't, aren't trying to do more in life or do good in life, and you end up in some trouble. Or you just end up in the, the wrong place, wrong time. Yep. And I think as it goes, we learn that some people are just meant to be for the moment. We learn that some people are just meant to teach us a lesson. And <laughs> tell me if I'm wrong. I think one of the biggest lessons is... Friends will, will always come and go, but some specific family, the right ones, will always stay by your side. No matter Thanks. no matter how hard life hits you and brings you down, there are those family members, whether obviously your parents are first and foremost, brothers and sisters, and some either close cousins or friends that turn into family. And they've been there through, through thick and thin. And um, I know that's definitely one of the hardest lessons that we had to had to go through, but we talked about it before. Some mm -hmm. of the dichos that they told us that we kind of learn as we go. And I don't know, we've spent probably like three weeks on this topic, kind of back and forth, because obviously that's the theme of the drop. But did you guys come up? Did you guys hear anything on the way throughout the couple of weeks? Anything I, new? Something that you may have been reminded? I think you hit the nail on the head. I think for me, dime con quien andas y te diré con... ¿Cómo va, cómo va ese dicho? Ese que acabas de decir. Dime con quién estás y quién eres. I think that really hit the nail on the head for me, um, especially in the last like few years, porque no nomás like it, it can't just it doesn't just lead you into trouble, but it also can hold you back from so many like limits that you can reach because if you're surrounded by the right people, you know, by the right motivational people, like-minded people who really believe in you and are pushing you to do whatever you want to do. Like you have, you have no idea to where you can get. Yeah. And it, and that will really determine a lot of, you know, yourself and whatever you want to do. Or even just meeting like the new people that would get you to that place. Mm -hmm. Right. Like if you're in a bad spot, you're going to be bad friends, whatever you're going to do, you're going to go in that separate, that B path. Well, you should be in the A path and you're not going to be able to meet the new people that you're able to have certain opportunities that you, you won't have with your other friends, right? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Man, I think uh, one of the other big dilemmas as big we, dilemma. big dilemmas, it's a big dilemma it's and a it's, huge a, dilemma. it's a spicy one, is when our parents get into arguments with one another, with brothers and sisters, about helping out family members back home. 
that are in Mexico, <sighs> back in the rancho. Yeah. Are we going to talk about generational curses? Generational yeah. curses. Oh, let's talk We're about, about it. Canceled, oh, no, no. Not. People are not ready for this. And, no. And let's just People put it out as this. a disclaimer. Everybody goes through different households. Everyone yep. lives different lives. People have different situations. But this is what we have lived and what we yeah. know, and as Latinos, you know, this is where we're coming from. Pero cada quien tiene su, su dilemma. But there is a lot of Latino generational curses that oh, have most, happened. Most definitely. Creo que hay los que vienen para acá, uno piensa, everybody thinks that stepping foot in the United States, that you're winning dollars left and right, <laughs> making thousands and hundreds, hundreds of dollars that you get to live good, and yet you're also going to send money back home. And for some parents, some family members, it 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 hasn't been the best and easiest path. Yes. Not the easiest. They may get only a hundred bucks and how do they expect to even send half of that back? Whatever the case is, and I know some family members get into it, brothers and sisters get into it, porque los terrenos. Ay, Who's gonna take care terrenos. of the houses back home? Who's gonna keep the houses when parents pass away? And I don't know, did did your guys' family ever fight about terrenos? Or in, in la quinceañera or the party. <laughs> your uncles Everybody are drunk you know, already. Yo no sé si tenga terrenos por pelear, pero I do know cuántas familias no se han separado por los terrenos. Mm. O cuántas familias no se hablan por los terrenos porque esto me pertenece a mí. Esto es mío. Acá me lo dejaron acá. It causes so many divides yeah. in families. Que, it, it gets so messy. And you know, cada quien has their own way of you know, dispersing whatever they have in whatever they way, way they want, but yeah. things get really, really messy and it causes um, like permanent divides yeah. in family. Have you guys have it, had anything like that happen to you guys? No. No? <laughs> no? Wow. Yeah. Now, the, most we, the most we do, at least with my family, um, we just send like, like the hand-me-downs to my cousins, um, mm -hmm. but they're, they're in the States, they're in Chicago. So oh. it's like... My, like no terrenos, no um, money, nothing. Yeah. So mm -hmm. Pretty chill, play back, I guess, family. It's like um, unos tíos no, pueden, no se pueden ver con otros tíos. No, hombre, some, some, feo. some uncles can't go to a same party because at the end of the day, you know what's going to happen. Yes. And it's going to hurt some feelings, and I'm very sorry oh, in it advance. Always is. That's why I'm not. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna hurt some. <laughs> I'm gonna stay quiet. See, but this is this That's is the fifth. this is us breaking that cycle and actually speaking truth because a lot of people are just scared to speak the truth. Yes. And unfortunately, some brothers and sisters kind of abuse of each other in what they owe them. They need to help them throughout their whole life, whether it's with $100 or $200 or just basically, even if they're adults, they need to help them out. And unfortunately, it's like, sometimes you have to cut off family members in order to live a peaceful life. But it's harder, I guess it's easier said than done though, right? It, I think you need your siblings to do something bad enough that shows you their true colors and makes you be like, all right, cool. It's yeah. easier to cut them off. I mean, the way I see it, it, yo vengo de una familia grande y yo no tengo terrenos por qué pelear. But the way I see it is like, okay, anything that I do for my future, like, I don't expect anything from anybody. Yeah. Like, los terrenos de mi familia son de ellos y qué bueno que, you know, tenemos donde llegar. But for me personally, de aquí en adelante, yeah. I, in my mentality, it's like I have to build what I want. I'm not expecting anything from anybody else. I'm not expecting any hand-me-downs. I'm not expecting of anything of that. So, you know, en familia, si te toca algo, qué bueno. But, like, I'm working towards yeah. whatever I want. And that's just, like... Terrenos can get so messy, so I'm like, well, you know what, forget it. they're super messy. I think, uh, well, my parents are kind of going through it. Yeah. My dad, right? Mm. I'm not going to air out their, their no, 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 dirty no. laundry and shit, but they're currently going through it. And my dad bought a piece of land, what, maybe 30, 40 years ago? Okay. And long story short, my grandpa passed away like a month ago. Right. My dad lent him the land to use as his own for what, 40 years, get some money out of it, utilize it to the best of his ability. And now that my grandpa passed away, now everybody's literally part owner of that land. Right. Ooh. So that's what we're kind of going through. It's a little tricky. Obviously, there's a lot to to go yeah. through a lot of legal jargon yeah. and a lot of legal shit we need to mm -hmm. figure out. But 
it's crazy because even the people who you would have least expected it, the one uncle that he literally helped him the moment he, what's it called? He was working. Yeah. Um, literally was like, yo, by the way, a piece of that land is mine too. My dad was like, whoa, 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 buddy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> buddy. And he got all sad. He got all sad because yeah. he's like, dude, that was my brother. Like the one brother that I could count on always. Or I thought I could count on always. Yeah. So I think that's a tricky part. Like, Yeah, it's so important to get things like that squared out. Yeah. Because it is. you just never know. You, you bring up a, a touchy subject, but I feel this to the core. Um, unfortunately, my grandpa isn't isn't here. So for everybody who has lost their grand, grandfather, and you come from a family that, you know, bien unida, bien cercana, all completed together, big parties, everybody gets reunited. For me personally, I feel as soon as the main one passed away, my grandpa, like, the family hasn't been the same. Like, there's an absence in the household. There's an absence at every party, every holiday, every festivity. And honestly, to bottom line, in every day, there's an absence. Because I feel like in every family, there is that one family member, whether it's a grandfather, aunt, uncle, that just kept everybody together. Like, the glue that held the family together. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And I don't know how to come back from that. I don't know if you can ever come back from that. And I don't know if there's ever such healing and getting into the whole, like trying to explain emotions in a Mexican household. Yeah. We can't. It's hard. I don't exist. I think, I don't know if there's a cure to that, but I do say like, enjoy your family members as much as possible as you can right now. Porque uno nunca sabe cuando van a estar y cuando no van a estar. So if you have your grandparents, call them. If you have your parents, call them just because you never know never but know. showing any type of emotion going back to what you're saying is very i feel like looked down upon yeah. in it's latino weak. hand yeah, yeah it's well, weak yeah it's weak yes or you cry you're weak men are not supposed to cry or there's no such thing as talking there's no <laughs> such thing as talking things out hey like it's not like hey let's sit down and let's have a conversation it, whoever yells the loudest wins Whoever yells the, lo- the loudest wins that argument or that debate. But whoever doesn't stop talking to. Are, yes, are you guys yes. that type of people, though? Like, do you, t- you want to be the right one no matter what? Are you guys the loudest ones? No. I am talk? not. Absolutely <laughs> yeah, exactly. not. I just don't talk. I'm going to cut your ass off. No. Like, I'm not going to bother. Like, I'm going like, to That's it. I'm going yeah. to give you one chance because that's me. And then I may give you a second chance. And that's just because... Yeah. I'm like, damn, that person, I don't see my life without them. Mm-hmm. But a third one, no va a pasar. Like, no matter what, you're, I'm done with you. But it, it also comes down to being able to talk to your parents about what you're going through and what's happening. Because how can you're trying to confine something with your parents, whether, whatever you're going through. But what are the what's the first thing we're, we're scared of? Getting yelled at. Getting in trouble. Yeah, yes. for sure. So that's when our parents are like, oh, ¿por qué no me dijiste? How can I? Because you were going to yell at me. It's okay. I approached you and you had a shit look in your face (laughs) and I got scared and I said, never mind. Have a good day. Bye. I'm away. Yeah. Yeah. Even though I was approaching you because I wanted to talk to you. Yeah. Because any little word or any little mishap is just triggering for them. Yeah. So they just don't know how to handle it. So how do you guys think that we try to break that cycle now with our parents now that we're more aware of better communication skills, even though I know we're learning, but we're still, yeah. how How do you guys do with your own parents or old, the older generation of how to practice a better communication? I don't know. I just, I just do with actions. Like I, I kind of learned that like changing them isn't like, they're not going to change. Like, yeah. It's just the best way to do it is just navigate around it. And then now I'm just teaching my little brother how to talk, you know, like I'll talk to him. It's different how I communicate with my little brother and then with my, with my parents. Right. Yeah. So with my parents, if I want to get a point across, I'll just do it. And then I, I just don't even talk to them. Yeah. Motions aside, but with my brother, I'll tell him I'll do it, and I'll tell him why I'm doing it, or hey, you should do this, 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 and that. And I talk about with emotions. Yeah, it's just very different. Like that hopefully, passing it down with him will change like how the family tree holds down. Yeah, because we're the first gen. Before that, everybody was in Salvador, and then like it, it was just us knowing how to navigate through everything. You know? Yeah, I think it comes to a certain point. Like people aren't going to change it much yeah after a certain point so you have to kind of get past that but also it's just kind of being a little vulnerable like you can do your part 
you can say how you feel. And if the other person takes it great, and if not, at least you did your part and you're, you're kind of trying to take a step in the right, the right path. Direction. Yeah, yeah. Because there's, it's, it's, it can be a little uncomfortable for people trying to express themselves, especially when your parents get like easily triggered. Oh my God. Yeah. It's scary, right? It's, it's hard to speak to your parents sometimes, especially. A sigh. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's the thing. Like, I'm no, just tired. What do you mean? it's like, <sighs> no, I hear that from my dad. I'm like, ah, you ain't, you're, you're in a mood. I'm not even going to bother approaching you because I know that one of those sides, I'm like, all right, you know what? I hear that sigh. I'm like, all right, you're not in the mood to talk. I was going to try and talk and maybe work something out that we were in okay terms. But if you don't want to talk, like, trust me, I'm, I was only really trying to work it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because I want to be in good terms. But if you don't care to be in good terms, then that's cool, too. Like, I'm chilling. Mm -hmm. And now it's like trying to practice those things with your parents. Like, say you get into an argument and telling your dad or mom, hey, I'm going to I'm going to step out. I'm going to leave. Mm -hmm. No, porque te vas a ir? It's like they no need terminado. to have. They expect you to yeah. have everything right then and there. Right Como then. like, dime ahorita. Dame la respuesta ahorita. ¿Qué ah. quieres hacer ahorita? And it's like, that hey, is, like, stop. Like, that is one thing that I have like practice so much that i've like come to terms now that i'm like you don't have to have the answer to everything right away yeah. and that is something that i grew up with a lot it was like dime ahorita, dime ya. and now it's just like if you need a second if you need five seconds yeah. it's okay oh no lo yeah. hacer? no lo hacer? i'm like bro it's let me wait, on your wait toes all the time. Like, dude, yeah. like i'm gonna help you out i'm gonna do it on my term though because you're asking me for my help yeah like yo chill the fuck back like I've literally had to do that recently because my parents are the type that want everything done right then and there. Yes. Yeah. It's like, hey, I'm busy. On their terms. It's like, I'm busy. Yeah. If you, if you still need help, like two, three hours later or tomorrow, yeah. like I'm down to help you. Yeah. But I'm not going to put my life on hold like I did for, what, 30 something plus years. Right. Just because you want me to help you with something. Well, it's different mm. too because, like, if you're you have like if you're young, obviously you do what your parents tell you. Of course, you know, yeah. there comes there's levels to this thing. But yeah, when you're older, you have your own life, like you have your own responsibilities. Like, yeah. it's hard to like be at their beck and call when you have your own stuff going yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, it's especially when again you're you're trying to break a generational curses, but you got to remind you, keep in mind that this practice has been in play for 40 plus years. Like uh, however old your parent is, they've been this way way before you yeah. and life mm -hmm. taught them to be this way and made them this way. So now again, how I said at the beginning, when we were younger, we didn't know any better. We learned the hard way and we may have caused our parents sleepless nights and we made them cause them do corajes and everything and more. So now that we're more aware and we're trying to break that, that bad habit that, you know, just practice better, better communication skills or whatever the case is. It's like, we're trying to break a 50 plus year practice that they had. And it's not going to come in from one day to mm -hmm. another. It's not going to come in from one week to another. It may, it may be some months, it may be some days, but it's like just slowly, everybody at their own pace. Yeah. Like, el que quiere cambiar va a cambiar. The one that wants to change will change. And, you know, sometimes, unfortunately, change is sometimes very, very much too late or, you know, that everybody changes yeah. when, you know, some unfortunately somebody goes nine feet under, ten feet under, like, Unfortunately, you can't change somebody if they don't want to change. No. That's just the, you know, the truth of it all. Like whether they're old, whether they're young, whether they come from who knows where, if somebody doesn't want to change, they like they're as much as you want to do, you can't, Yeah, you can't change them. And that's okay. You just got to keep doing you and doing what you think is best. But that's a hard to reality that we had to learn. Yeah, and well. I think we've done we've done it a couple times on on the podcast before. But how you said earlier, like for your parents, if you're trying to break that, you're trying to break that generational curse, and you're trying to break that chain. It's like, hey, how about you make that change and you tell your parents, "I love you." You tell your parents, "I'm proud of you" or "Thank you." At the most random of times, like it doesn't need to be a celebration, it doesn't need to be the holiday, it doesn't need to be a birthday. Like <laughs> all it is, yeah, special occasion. Be a special occasion. Yeah. Be, yeah, like it doesn't need to be just because they expect it during those times. But as trying to again trying to break these these norms, it's like 
hey, these are different times. It's easier times. You don't need to be this way anymore. Like, mm -hmm. you shouldn't be on a fight or flight sure. mode anymore. Like, it's going to be okay. But, you know, some parents, they, that's all they know, fight or flight. And unfortunately, we were just uh, collateral damage along that life life course. And, you know, be got to have give your parents a little piece of grace of be able to forgive them. They didn't know any better. Yeah, I you mean, know? I feel like they went through, like, we, they have gone through things, and we've gone through things. It's just been very different. Like, yeah. you know, back then, they didn't have the internet. They didn't have all this stuff that we have now. But All this help. Huh? All this help. Yeah, yeah. literally. Resources. But it's not to say that our generation isn't fighting things either. I mean, nosotras también, it's just different. Different fights. Different, different fight. fights. Different fights. But Yeah, they, they fought. I mean, I may be wrong, but they fought to get a... Get a stable life, stable home, provide something for us. We're fighting for all the internal things that everybody missed. The like mental. We're, we're, we're fighting yeah. like all the the pressure of giving back to what they suffered through. Wow. Because like my mom could write a book of how she got here, oh what she God. went through, my dad too. Yeah. Like it's pretty crazy. And then when they told me that, I'm like, all right, cool. Obviously my life's not as nearly as hard as yours or yeah. how it was or how you even got here, but now it's all that pressure. Like I need to, I need to do something for me to repay them, and they're yeah. not even telling me that. It's just like that mental pressure mm -hmm. yeah. that you want to do. That, that, like how you said, the internal things of fighting. Yeah, so. that's good. I don't think that like one battle is more difficult than another. I think, because I feel like a lot of times, like Latino parents are like, "Pues tú no pasaste lo que yo pasé." Try to compare. Try to compare what I went through is harder than what you're going through right yeah. now. <laughs> I feel like, may, like I don't know about you guys, but I feel like back then it was more physical like challenges that they would go through getting up early driving to work caminando no sé cuántas millas para Camine ir a la escuela y siento que para nosotros es más mental like yeah. now yes we have the internet at our hands yes you can order food right off your phone and it can get here in 10 minutes yeah. but the mental battles that we like like that we com confront yeah. every day it's it's that or harder you know like and now with everyone not like expressing the way how they feel, it's just, yeah. it's not to say one's harder than the other. Yeah. It's just, it, it can be equally just as difficult. Different levels of hard. Yeah. Yeah. Different types yeah. of hard. Yes. Choose yeah. your hard. How far are we? 22. 22. Oh, wow. Mm. I feel like we've been, we've, been, we've been going at this. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, to tie in what we're even saying, it's like, no se te olvide de donde vienes, you know? Like, yes. You, you come from hardworking parents. You know, some of them may have made some mistakes, some of them more than others. Some of them may have caused you immense pain or trauma throughout your years. But, you know, if we didn't have tough times, we don't know what the good times look exactly. like. Exactly. And if we didn't go through those moments, like, who would we be now? We're this way because we went through good, the bad days, some bad months, some bad weeks. But now, because of all the pain that we were that we endured, all the pain that we went through, like that's who we are. That's who we are. Now we get to share the story. Now we get to help out others, and now we get to look in the mirror and feel proud of ourselves too for making it out, for not being the same person anymore. You know, maybe you were a shy, timid person back then because you were just afraid of the re the rejection of everybody because your parents didn't show you enough love, and now look at you. Showing love to others, now being out there, being the center center of attention, being the people, being that person that brings everybody together. It's just, da gracias, give thanks to those bad times, as crazy as it sounds, because without them, who would you be right now? We wouldn't. Okay, so then let me uh, let me pivot this a little oh, bit I don't know. to Damn. something a little more like <laughs> something a little more something positive like, yeah. because we're talking about que no se te olvide de dónde vienes sure. and we all are first generation. So what is something that you guys do to actively stay in touch with your roots? Ooh, so a simple question, but you know, um, music for sure. Music. Uh, Talk to us, disc. So my dad grew up in la época de los bookies. Los oh, yeah, yeah. Es de, so it's a funny story because when we would drive before, he would put it on and yo, no, it's aburre dormir. <laughs> now it's like, man, that song spoke facts. Esa canción la voy a dedicar a esta y it, like, poniendo esa canción, escuchando esas canciones y la verdad, poniéndome las botas, 
ahorita la tejana y escuchar música don, donde quiera que vaya poner en orgullo que sé de dónde vengo de dónde son mis papás o de dónde so somos de Michoacán my parents are from Michoacán recordando que es, no no hay ninguna pena mi piel es blanca tengo los ojos también cafeses a veces azules y verdes ah, ah, no, no, no. va a decir en el sol mis ojos son me? Ah. Ah. <risa> But just pon, poner en alto de dónde vienen mis padres y, y la verdad nomás poner el apellido de nosotros en alto en alto Don, oh, ¿Quién es tu papá? Oh, oh trabaja. So, the best compliment is when they give my dad the, oh, your son does this, this, like, very well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You know, I know I'm making it. him proud. And, and just, no soy Luis, soy Luis. Luis. Tengo que corregir a la gente. Ah, no it. soy Luis, Luis. soy Luis. <laughs> Eso soy Luis. es todo. It, is, it can be that simple, you know, with just keeping, like, música mexicana, música uh, latina alive. What about you guys? Um, I feel like I embrace the way I talk Spanish. I feel like my Spanish is uh, my Salvadoran Spanish is a little bit different than Mexican Spanish. And it then is. My like little lisp is different <laughs> as well too. So yeah, kinda, give us a little something, Jose. Us, Tell us a little, us a little ¿Cómo, something. How's your day? How's your day? My mom is good, but I can't. I can't put, <laughs> he got shy. Ah, it's too much. It's too much. But I can't. He's a shy. Like, when I talk with my, I've always uh, talked Spanish with my with my parents. And um, just like embracing that, even if I go out and I need to like, I don't know, talk, order something, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, and just eating um, just Salvadoran food like yeah. with my hands. Yeah, like if you eat a pupusa with, your, with a knife and fork, you're doing it wrong. Is that not how you do it? No, you got to eat it with your hands. Oh, my God. With the cortillo. <laughs> yeah, he the didn't know me how to do you it. You got to get messy. Yeah. <laughs> we got oh, mad really? at us when we use a fork. Dude, I was sure. about to use a fork. Don't use a fork. <laughs> We're going to do a mukbang <laughs> oh. then with pupusas. Yes. Mm. Yeah, I'm telling you, yeah, like, stuff like that. Playing uh, cumbias. Merengues, stuff like that. Love it. Um, just not. Uh, before I was embarrassed of it, especially when I was like in uh, middle school. Yeah. Yes. But like now, obviously not anymore. I kind yes. of embrace it. Different times. I you? love it. Times. What about me? How do what I do stay? You, what is one thing that you do to stay in touch with your roots? Obviously speaking Spanish here, but I think visiting the place where my parents were raised and born at. Mm -hmm. That keeps me pretty grounded and tied down to my roots. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was lucky enough that I was just there, what, a week ago? Yeah. Yeah. So doing that, obviously going, walking, all the little pueblitos, all the little tienditas. Visiting. Like, yeah. Um, I got to see a couple of the places where my mom grew up. She was like, hey, crecí aquí. I used to, uh, esta casita se, se estaba cayendo cada rato. Like, derecha de lodo. I would literally, like, smear mud on the walls and then paint them and all this stuff and i'm like oh that's nice like it's one of those things where it's like yeah. wow you had to do that right we're over here literally just living life living comfortably and you used to like literally build your home so yeah. i think that's pretty much it okay so in a, a fun segment cuál es su platillo favorito de donde vienen you can't just pick one you uno can pick one uno Top three, oh. top three. Top three, okay. I love los tacos. Por más sencillos que son, soy taquera, you know, I'll keep it to two. Los tacos, and where I am from. Okay. I'm from my mountain family's from, um, in Jerez, hacen un, lo que hacen asado de boda. It's like a mole. Mole type thing, but if you're from Zacatecas and you know exactly what I'm talking about, it's like asado, mole, carne de puerco, it is like spicy and sweet at the same time. It's at every wedding, every quinceañera, every like mm. special occasion. Mm. I'm going to make you guys some so you guys can oh, try you it. Can. Ya dije, ya dije. Si sabes cocinar. No por nada, pero el arroz no se me quema. Ah, cabrón. Ah, ah cabrón, ya tú puedes casar. Ya se puede casar. de boda and tacos for me, hands down. Oof. Okay. Pepe? Damn. I was going to say uh, mole. You already said tacos, so I'm gonna keep it separate. Okay. I'm gonna okay. keep it different. You could, you could come I'm gonna okay. do okay. mole okay. and carnitas. Oh. I love me a good anything carnitas, a good carnitas taco. You know what? There's burrito. nothing like Michoacan oh, carnitas. Dude, and if you know, you know. Because like like there's nothing like Ooh. it. Was free? <laughs> and I had to stop by. There's like this. Uh, Where did little... you go? Quiroga? No, se... it's on the way to Zamora. Mm. It's literally like this little hole in the wall. Even then carnitas. And rotisserie chickens. That's all they sell. Mm. Nothing mm. else. 
And I was like, you know what? I got to do both. Mm. So me chingue un pollo. <laughs> bag, car- oh, it was big bag activities all week for yeah. sure. I <laughs> carnitas. The, the one platillo, so we could keep it short, carne and su jugo. Mm. And what? Oh, carne and su jugo. Pantera rosa. Pantera rosa. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was yeah, fire. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know. Bomb. If you, you know, know, you know. If your mom makes that, Invita, invite us. Porque ahí vamos. <laughs> ahí I was going to say, I'll make some. Heat too. In, <laughs> in the heat, I want to be Should sweaty, bro. Should we have like a end of summer, like dinner One party? Thousand okay, percent. Okay, so I'm going to say like, I won't make it, but my Pala. mom will make it. Ah, no, oh, no. Nah, you got to make it. You got to make it. If it's for the, it's for, if it's for our best interest, then yes. <laughs> it have definitely your, is. Have definitely your mom is. make it, please. Wait, you can provide the, you can provide the venue. <laughs> I mean, of course, I have to be with Okay. Okay. With the, uh, the salsa and stuff. Um, I would say, Second one would be um, tamales salvadoreños. I used to not like them, yeah, because they were like squishy and like I had vegetables in it. But with the garbanzo beans and the chicken, oh, it's amazing. Oh my god, those Ooh. are so good. Also, fire. the third one would be plátano fritos. Oh, okay. those are frijoles, good too. Crema oh. queso fresco. Okay, so you got in, you got into that. Crema, into, into, queso, but into the, 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 the frijoles. Oh, into the desserts. The desserts. Okay, wait, but for pupusas, which kind of pupusa? Revueltas. Oh, Revueltas. Oh, lo, lo roco? Oh, yeah. Queso, queso con lo loco. Lo roco. Hey, look at he said it. He said it. He said it. Queso con lo roco. He said it. Con lo roco. Oh, oh my God. You guys. Honestly, uh-huh. la, ca- la cajeta. Ah, la cajeta la quemada. Cajeta. Con un bolillo. Oh. oh fresh so bolillo. Like a fresh bolillo. Oh, what, what do you guys know about chongos, though? I was about to see. Okay, so look, I'm gonna be honest. Okay, so wait, let me, let me tell you. What is it? Because look. Me and my mom are mad at Pepe because she was like, hey, pregunta a Pepe si no puede traer unos chongos. Y dije, ma, ni a mí me va a traer. No, es oh, que no le traje a nadie. Chongos. Es que look. What is that? It's like, oh, oh it's a Michoacan thing like, for sure. Yeah, it's curdled milk. It's curdled caramelized and it's, milk. Uh, it's curdled milk and it's cooked with piloncillo and cinnamon. And piloncillo. sugar. It's like it's brown like sugar. Brown sugar. Oh, okay. it's like Have you ever had like flan? Sugar. Yeah. Think of it, but like it's a really, it's a different consistency. Like of thicker? like, like thicker. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of like thicker. a little bit more wedgy firm. almost. It's yeah. Or can oh go ahead. No, please. I was gonna say we'll bring you some. Or like or like yeah. cajeta con las obleas. Mmm. Those are fire. Those are fire. Okay. You like cajeta, but, don't you? But. <laughs> But you not know, have dairy? I can have dairy. I just, I'll do it. I just don't like it. I'm going to risk it for that cajeta. Look, if Pepe brings you back chongos or cajeta, he loves you. For Dang. Sure. Just Guess not what? real. I don't know. Any of y'all exactly. trying to bring so y'all shit. Let's, let's, let's clarify. That's what, you're trying to, that's what you're trying to say, that I don't love you. But you know what? I didn't bring you any, so oh take that no. as you See, may. But these, these are... Going to our roots, like mm-hmm. these are some dishes that a nosotros. Did I always ask that for my birthday, Christmas, and Thanksgiving? <sighs> oh, the, your favorite foods? Yeah, the, uh, the, yeah. at least pupusas. Like it has to be. Yeah, every time no my what. my dad's friends go to Mexico, they bring back chongos, <laughs> or one of them. Honestly, <laughs> he's like car- carne seca. Oh, beef jerky. Okay, it's not beef it's jerky, different. but for those who don't know what carne seca is, it's, it's like basically. Yeah, but it's different coming from. But it's different. For Mexico. Oh, I don't fuck with it either way. No? I can eat it. I'd just rather not. Con chile. Tiene chile. No, I know. He said, I know. I, I, said, I, said, I said what I said. The, the chungles. The chungles were, I tried them. I tried them at two different spots. Were they good? Yes, they're good. Are they the best thing that I've ever had in my life? Absolutely not. Chungles? Like, yeah, chungles. Oh, no, they're not the best, but they're, they're not good. the best. I'd rather have, they have like a coconut candy called cocadas. Oh, oh hell yeah. yeah. Fuck yeah. Rather <laughs> those are more but flavorful. It, they're... But if they, they taste a lot better. If they give it to you with the bee, that's the best. When there are bees all around the place. Oh, yeah. yes. That's how you know you yeah. Yeah. If there's a bunch of honeybees around it, you, oh, know, it's you know it's good. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's really good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Just because I didn't bring none back, don't mean I didn't try them. La nieve de garrafa. What do you know about that nieve de garrafa? The limon. The limon is fire. Fire. Wait, they have the pistachio. Do you like nieve? It's so good. Everything you guys have been saying, I have no idea. We got to make a little Mexico. You don't know what nieve is? We just what? go to the Mercadito. Oh, oh yeah. Or well, we could just go to the Mercadito. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I literally True. told them, I'm like, hey, oh, yeah. you want chungos? I'll buy you some chungos from the Mercadito. Wait, They're not the same. Mercadito right there in LA? Yeah. Yeah, I was yeah. just there today. Yeah, like, yeah, three yeah, days yeah. ago. How about we just, so we, we all go as a fire. team? We all go as a team. We'll get, we get all the goods and we eat at the restaurant con un mariachi. Oh. Los cante. Una musiquita. Someone's birthday that day. I don't care whose it is, but someone's going someone's gonna to be complaining. 
cumpliendo años ese día. I remember I used to go as a kid and get a cheeseburger. <laughs> You were that. Oh, you were that. Chicken? Kid? I was, like, I was chicken nugget kid, but I was just not embracing. Okay, was there something as a kid that you didn't eat then that now you eat? Um, no. My mom made me everything. She never gave me an option. She said, "Te lo comes well, o no comes." I well, ate everything. I just didn't like it. I didn't well, like tortillas before. What the hell? What, the, what the hell? I had a million pictures of me and Pampers and a tortilla man. <laughs> <laughs> he used to dip it in his crema. Yeah, no, I didn't. You guys, no, I, like, tell me, crema, tell me if I'm the only one, but like, so in elementary school, my mom me mandaba con like lunch, right? And everyone had like their sandwiches and their little American foods. My mom me mandaba con arroz, frijoles y carne de lengua. Yeah. And I had my little plate and I, like, I remember... Kids would like make fun of me because yes. of like the food that I had, I and had it was my mom, like, traumatizing. I wanted me a ham and cheese sandwich. Yeah, <laughs> like give me a cup of noodles, give me something, and she was like, "Esa no es comida, que quién sabe qué." Now I'm like thankful. We're going a little north, but it was too. so embarrassing. I had like <laughs> carne de lengua in third grade. It's because guys, <laughs> let's, let's be but very now honest. You're like, damn, that's so that hot. was fire. Let's be very honest. <laughs> Times have changed because before, if you dress. Paisa, as everybody says, yes, you were a joke. You were made fun of. You were being bullied. If you didn't have the fresh Jordans or during my time, the Hurricanes or the G-Units. <laughs> oh, the G-Units. Yeah, the no. G-Units. Or the oh. Jabo. What? Get, okay, you guys don't remember Jabo jeans? Or Jabo? The FUBU. The FUBU. 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 No, okay. Reebok back then, too. A little. Hey. But if you didn't have that, you would be made fun of. Now. Yes. I now. see high schoolers and I see junior high kids. No, I'm trying to embrace a botas. Have you, have you guys seen like los grupios que se juntan en los baños? Oh. Like los los nor like los trios que tienen. No, los grupios People, antes there was smoke weed in the restroom and they get. Times were different back then. <laughs> but know, now, now I've seen. <laughs> Everyone now used to go to the bathroom to fight. Like, yeah. Bringing to their fight. instruments and playing like at school, así como si nada con norteños y todo. In, in my high school, during like my freshman year. There were like the DJs, or obviously back then, también las bandas were still in like mm -hmm. hitting at that time. So all the paisas would go dance in the middle of the quad, and I was one of them. But my sister was in high school with me, so <laughs> I would dance with my sister and then some friends or whatever. But that's like embracing, like, oh, who are the paisas at the school? Everybody dancing mm -hmm. in the middle of the quad. Nah, like back, like, well, you were what? Like, you're three to 13. four? Years? Yeah, so I'm 13. Yeah, I think when I went in, it was like maybe another two years in. The biceps they were the soccer players, and we just wouldn't talk to them. You wouldn't? No. Damn, you didn't it was shamed on. It was like, oh, yeah. those are the biceps. It was like. really shamed on being like too Mexican, Mexican. Yeah. Too Mexican. Yeah. or too, too Mexican. Mexican or too paisa. Because me too, like, it was really, I mean, a mí me valió madre. Pero Same. I, I, like, ay, que paisita, que quien yeah. sabe que. And now. And everyone's funny. trying to be a little. And ain't it funny how the tables have turned? Now yeah. everyone's over here at Pico and Colombia and all these Arriba other ranchos. Listen, yeah. I was never like that. This is the most like bicep <laughs> I've ever been. He's hanging out with steps. Baby steps. But, which like, it's great yes. it's great that people are embracing the culture now but it's just crazy how it was like 10 years ago it's different 15 it's, years ago it's uh 100%. as cliche as it sounds it's a new generation um a lot of i mean i'm pretty sure we're gonna insert some clips at the beginning of this but we just met some not even teenagers right no, were they, they were like, some they must have had to be under 14. Yeah, under 14. Under 14. Yeah, so the smallest one was probably like eight, nine. Eight, yeah. nine, but, Crazy. you know, too charreada, like, to the roots. And just seeing that, the younger generation embracing that, it's like, wow, que orgullo, you know? Yeah. Like, I'm glad that right now they're shining light and doing that sport. and Because I think that's uh, Mexico's top sport, right? La charreria. La charreria. La charreria. It's number one. But again, it's... If it's not us that's our social media being able to expose all these little things, you know, some people tend to forget. Absolutely. So if it's not one trend, it's another trend. And now the old trends are coming back in, like the Duranguense and all that stuff. So I I'm going to learn it. how to dance all that because honestly. We got you. We no got you. Two-step, baby. I, I have to say. When like, in doubt, two-step. <laughs> you, yeah, we'll two we'll you can only we'll two do it steps all. No, because I'm just like It's great to see them Because personally Like my family has practiced charreria mm. For years Like we're oh. fourth generation Not me I but was all, like, say, oh, mis so hermanos, you can do it too? We're like third, fourth generation charreria So it's really nice to see like All of this And seeing them do it Because like 
well, personally, that's that was my life, like, yeah. yendo a los coleaderos y a las charrerías. And it's so beautiful, and it makes, like, da mucho orgullo. Yeah. Said Mexicano, he said, you know, yeah, Latino. And just being able to practice, like, such an old sport yeah. in 2024. I didn't know it's, it was a sport. That was the first time I'm seeing it. It's that. a sport. Yeah. Yeah. We it's have a, to go a, to a charreada so you can and see it all. And this is where uh, working smarter, not harder, comes Absolutely. in. Absolutely. Because, you know, before you would have to go through all these competitions and... And in, in, in a general aspect, you would have to go through the bottom of the list all the way to the top to be one of the most known athlete or charro or just even in, in a general aspect, the best guy in construction or whatever the case is. But now, because of social media, all you got to do is have the best content and showcase your work. So, I mean, my dad built his business, a pest control from the ground up. Now it's like, oh, we can reach... You reached about 10,000 with the last 10 years. Well, we can reach 10,000 within one video mm -hmm. in one minute. And it's different. But to make the new, the old generation understand that, hey, like life can change through social media. Absolutely. Your business, if you, whatever small business you have, whether you're doing a taqueria in your backyard, whether you are uh, doing construction, like one video can change the whole business, the whole yeah. outcome of all of it. But to un make our parents understand, it's hard. That kind of goes back to what Jose had said. Work, Changing them. Yeah, you yeah. mentioned that. Yeah, I'm still telling my, my mom, like, yeah, like, I get, like, we get funds from this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm not mom, just I'm not just, yeah. I'm not just having fun. Yeah. 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 My mom understands. I'm lucky enough to where she, un like, she actually understands. And she's like, do your videos. Do whatever you got to do. Take yeah. your pictures. <laughs> and I'm like, hey, pero la gente va a hablar. She's like, me vale madre. Me vale madre. Yeah. She's like, I don't care. She's like, you know what? People are going to talk no matter what. So yeah. go out there. Yeah, lo que tengas que hacer. But it's just like uh, to tell your Hispanic or his Hispanic parent, Hey, I'm gonna go do videos and pictures, and I'm gonna go get paid for them. Mm -hmm. They're like, they the first question is, ¿Pues cuánto te van a pagar? ¿Y por qué te van a pagar? Get a it it's, it's something that they don't understand. Like, and we're still, everyone's still trying to figure we're, it we're out. Still to figure we're it still out. trying to we're figure it out. We're still trying to figure it out ourselves. But so it, I can imagine. Yeah, I think them. a lot of times parents think like, oh, it's just, ay, va a ir a tomarse fotos, va a ir a grabar un videito, que no sé qué. Um, I feel like my mom doesn't understand it, but she supports it. She's just like, lo que tú quieras, you know. My yeah. biggest cheerleader behind me, but like, it goes like sm work smarter, not harder. Not harder, and that just goes yeah. not with just social media, but just like anything. Like yeah. now with technology, it's like I feel like our parents back then would have to wake up at the crack of dawn <laughs> and come back like, yeah, it's like at eight, eight at night. Up, and if you're not doing yeah. that schedule, then you're not working hard enough. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like now even we can for, wake up whenever we want. Yeah, like yeah. even the nine to fivers like, that that have the late home, shift. Yeah. You know, or they work they work from home. Yes. It's like, pues a qué hora entras? Oh, I, I went. Pues qué vas a hacer? En la mañana qué vas a hacer? Sí. It's like, I remember when I used to have my nine to five. Um, it was uh, I didn't have to clock in. And when I told my mom that, I was like, What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> no te van a pagar? Yeah. Like, no, yeah. <laughs> or like, I'll be done within at five p.m. I was like, ¿Por qué no haces overtime? It's like, Mom, the office is closed. Yeah. I'm <laughs> salary. Like, 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 I go in. At a, I go in whenever I want, and exactly. I leave at five. It's like. Oye, ¿por qué te dieron una hora para lunche? ¿Por qué estás en la casa? ¿Por qué estás en la casa? ¿Por qué estás sentado en el sofá? No estás haciendo nada. Aren't you going to be late? No, I'm not going to be late. I don't have a time to go back. I just got to make sure that my work gets done yes. for the day. Yeah. I think like a lot of time, like for me, like especially now after the pandemic, when working from home, it's like, oh, no estás trabajando. <laughs> you're not, you're not actually working. What's happening? Hold on, let me check this camera. It's recording. Sure it is. It is. No. We're not recording. We're not recording. Time out. Oh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw the recording. We are recording? Thing. I was like, damn. Yeah, we're still recording. We're still recording. Period. I miss me talking in Spanish. Hey, hey, uh, that five little snoops. <laughs> this, is five seconds. this is just what happens when you're trying to be an entrepreneur. You got to do it all by yourself. <sighs> Talk it, about it. It It's hard. It's hard. But Talk it's, about hard. It. it's worth it. Is it? I will never change anything. I think it's a mindset. Not everybody is made to be an entrepreneur. No. So what makes uh, an entrepreneur? Or what, what traits do you think are needed? You got to be obsessed. Obsessed. You have to be creative. Creative. Um, you, you cannot give up at the first sign of failure. No. You need discipline instead of motivation. Discipline. There it is. You just, just, cut the camera. There it is. Just, <laughs> just got to do it. You have to be very disciplined. <laughs> yeah. It's, and you have, yeah. No matter good day, bad day, you just got to keep going, you know? You got to have some sort of... Discipline. Some sort of patience, 
Worse. Um, but honestly, as I tell anybody, it's look, you have to know why you're starting it. You have to have at least a goal in mind and you have to understand that it's not, it may not come within the first month, the first year, first two years. You have to be patient. As Jose said, you have to be disciplined. You got to keep working at it because you never know when your big break is going to come. And you also have to be passionate about what yeah. you do because all of that doesn't come with something that you don't like. You right. have to be somewhat passionate. And remember, work is work. So there's going to be good times yeah. and there's going to be bad times. But for the most part, you have to love whatever you're doing. Love what you're doing. Even on the days where you don't you don't want to get up and do it. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing it for the money, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. Yeah. Yes, we yes. want to... We want to support ourselves or our families or whatever with what we're doing, but you got to go into it like, hey, if this doesn't work out, that's okay with that's me okay. because yeah. I'm, I love what I'm doing right now. You learned something from yeah, it. You you're from it, right? you're yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I think the, throughout the whole process, too, to kind of wrap in our one of our last subjects that's, you know, we save the, the best for last and one of the hardest ones is okay. you got to have some faith. You got to believe in something bigger than you. Something there's always somebody bigger than you and you have to trust them. You know, and what I'm trying to say is, you know, I believe in God and I trust in God. Did it get a little shaky throughout the throughout the road, throughout my life? Yeah, I think at one point, uh, us from our generation, we get a little lost and we stop believing in the man above because, you know, life isn't going the way we planned it or the way we ever imagined. And, you know, we tend to go away and it's hard for, mm -hmm. you know, at least specifically my mom or moms in general where oh you don't believe in in god why what did why why don't you why don't you go to church every sunday why mm -hmm. don't you go do this is this, this i did the the communion confirmation like everything but you as a humans you get lost so i know for my parent it was a little hard for them to understand like hey i don't maybe not right now because look at everything that's happened already like if he did love me this wouldn't have happened mm -hmm coming to terms like wow why not me i this happened to me okay thank you thank you for it happened to me now i try i'm trying to understand why but i don't know did you guys ever have that that like back and forth with the parent or disagreeing with your parents um personally like my family most half and half but they're not catholic like and i think as latinos like going back to catholicism yeah. like your relationship with god for me, is a personal thing, whether you're Catholic, whether you're Christian, whether you're whatever. Um, and I think as I got older, like, I had to go through it. Like, I had times where I was like, no, no quiero estar involucrada en la iglesia, que blah, 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 blah. Like, because as a young one, like, I was forced to go to church yeah. all the time and believe in, like, this, 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 and that. And, you know, life humbles you. Life humbles you, and then you get back up, and now, like, Lo que quiera Dios, yo lo quiero. I do not want anything that's not in my path, that's not God's plan, in my path. Like, yo siempre digo, like, let go and let God. And just what he has in store for you is bigger than your, like, your wildest dreams. But you got to have a little faith. You guys, you guys ever had anything with your parents over that? I mean, I was always, uh, like, I, like Jack Jack mentioned, like, I was always forced, I guess. But I was always a nerd. Like, I was always in, in big into, like, data, factual things. Mm. And mm. even growing up, I'm like, what if I can't see them. Like, you know, like, what, what's yeah. this and that? And then um, I've had experiences with, like, just bad, I don't know if it's bad, bad energy. Mm -hmm. Like, just, like, not feeling good. Yeah. Like, always being watched, right? And put my faith into God. I kind of helped. But then after that, like I said, like, I've always been a nerd. I've always been, like, like with science and stuff yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. And I went into to that little phase of like questioning everything, and then just uh, yeah. not. Uh, I've always believed in in something bigger than myself, yeah. and always it's always been God. And um, I've never. I've always said I'm always a Christian. I've always I always believe in God. I always believe in Him. And I'm now I just kind of let go of like questioning and just letting it happen. Like, mm -hmm. Just like it's not my. Who am I to question? You know. Yeah. 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 So it's like yeah, now I just put my faith into something bigger, which is God. Love it, man. I mean, I think we've all questioned our faith, mm -hmm. especially yeah. when life is lifing a little too hard, you know? It's like, damn, yeah, why is this happening? 
And then there's times where I've questioned it and told my mom, hey, like, sometimes I'll say it jokingly, but every, just kidding, and there's, like, some truth to mm-hmm. it, you know? Yeah. It's like, dude, does God even exist? Yeah. It's like, if he did, like, would this shit really be happening? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't they say que Dios quiera todos sus hijos and all this stuff? Sí. Yeah. If he fucking loved me, like, he wouldn't be making me go through this. Right? Yeah. yeah. And then... Obviously, you have your conversations with your parents, and you're like, you know what? It could be a lot worse. Yes. Like, if God didn't love me, it could be a lot worse, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, it's like little things like that that kind of just, I question my faith, but at yeah. the same time, he's helped me out in so many occasions mm-hmm. that, like, I pull myself back. It's like, right. stop fucking, like, being like that because, you know what? He's helped you out when you actually needed the help. Yeah. Right now, it's just a little little bump in the road. You'll get through it. Mm -hmm. He'll guide you once more, hopefully. You see, no, you got people around you that'll help, you know, guide your way. Mm -hmm. I'm a firm believer that everything that we did today, the rancho, because I was telling you guys, I was, we came to this rancho. I was a little nervous because I didn't know what to expect, but I was like, thank God everything turned out the way it did because we got some fantastic content. Like, this is all. God's plan. I'm yeah. a firm believer in that. Oh, gracias. Gracias a Dios for, for the moments, for all the good and bad, and for us to be all, all here. And for today, there's no bad day because, again, we're alive. We have mm-hmm. an opportunity. And if you got through this whole episode, I hope, I hope you already ordered your shirts because the shirts are mm-hmm. out already. And, man. Before we go, though, minute. we haven't done it in a minute. Do y'all have any quotes that y'all want to say? Dang. Because we have not done this in what? Maybe four done. episodes. Mm. I don't. Uh, I have, have one. one. So go I ahead. saw I this one. Okay. I saved what is, oh, he it. saved it. Yeah. I saved it. This, this one was to too good. Right. Deja que tu fe sea más grande que tu miedo. Amen. You know what I was going to say? I was going to say, let go and let God. Mm. Que van las mismas. <laughs> Cosa so, misma. Yeah. Yeah. See, like, God, like God have the, the, the wheel. Like, let him like, Jesus take you. the wheel. Jesus take yeah. the wheel. Pues, aquí buenas noches del buenas rancho. Noches. Ya se oscureció un poquillo. Ya well, no nos ven. Ya no nos ven. Ya well, se falta una fugata um, ya. Sí. Pero, A little bonfire. Pero, ordenen sus camisas. Ordenen las camisas. Mm-hmm. Thank you guys in advance. Puede. Another another episode in the books. They tell us a live podcast, baby. Most authentic, most organic. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah. We're going to do the gold over there. <laughs>